Welcome to Mystery Science Theater Presents Constant Velocity. Today we're going to talk about objects that have a constant velocity. If we were to measure the position and time for an object that has constant velocity, we can create a position versus time graph. And position versus time graph for constant velocity will look something like this. We'll use x to represent position, measured in meters, and t for time, measured in seconds. And if we were to graph it, it would be nice and linear. On a position versus time graph for constant velocity, the slope of the graph represents the velocity. The intercept of the graph represents the starting position of the object. And so the equation of this graph, if we're thinking y equals mx plus b, for this graph, our y-axis is the position. So we have x equals the slope represents the velocity. We'll use a v for velocity, times the x-axis, which in this case is t, so v times t, plus the intercept, which is the starting position. We'll use an x with a little subscript of 0, x naught, or x initial. This is the general equation that we get from this linear position versus time graph. A couple of things we can learn here. If I take this equation, I subtract the initial position from both sides, I end up with x minus x initial equals v times t. Well, this x is the final position, x initial is the initial position, and whenever I have a final something minus an initial something, we call that a change. So this is a change of x, or a change of position. The symbol we use to show change is a delta, which looks like a little equilateral triangle. So delta x equals vt. And delta x, the change of position, is what we call displacement. So displacement is equal to velocity times time. Now, let's look back at our, at our graph. As I look at the slope here, pick two points, and I do the rise over run. The rise is how much the position changes, and the run is how much the time changes. So the change in position over the change in time is the slope. That's how we get that the slope of the position time graph is the velocity. So we can see that back over here again. Now I'd like to talk about distance versus displacement. We just learned that displacement is the change of position, which is the final position minus the starting position. Distance is a measure of the path length. Or in other words, how far do you have to travel to get to your ending point. For example, if I started here at position A and I went over here to position B, and then I went over here to position C. Let's say this is uh, 15 meters, and this is 14 meters. Say I started at A, and I went to C, and then I turned around and came back to B. My displacement, my change of position, notice if I started here at A, I ended up, my final position is 15 if A is 0, and this is 15, and this would be another 14 would be position of 29. So if I started at 0 and I ended at 15, my final position is 15 minus my starting position 0. So my displacement, my delta x, would be 15 meters. My distance traveled would be, I traveled 15, 29. So I traveled 29 on the way out and I traveled 14 on the way back. And so the distance I traveled was actually 43 meters. That's how far I traveled in my whole trip to get from A to C back to B. Whereas my displacement, how far I am at the end from where I started, is simply the 15 meters. So you can see the difference between distance and displacement. Similarly, there is a difference between speed and velocity. We just learned on the last slide that velocity is equal to the displacement over time. So the change of position, displacement over time. Speed, it turns out, is equal to distance over time. So that's the difference between speed and velocity, between distance and displacement. For distance, the direction you travel doesn't matter. 
I traveled 29, and then I traveled 14. For displacement, the direction does matter. I traveled 29 this direction, and then 14 back. And so I got a different answer for displacement than I had for distance. Similarly, for speed, the direction doesn't matter because it's distance over time, whereas velocity, the direction does matter because it is displacement divided by time. That's the difference between distance and displacement and speed and velocity. Now let's take a look at velocity versus time graphs. If I start with an object that moves with constant velocity, its position time graph, we know, is linear, something like this. If I want to draw the velocity versus time, velocity is measured in meters per second, time in seconds, then I can see here from this graph, I know that the slope represents the velocity, and I can tell from the slope that it is a positive slope and it is a constant. So I have a constant positive slope here, that means I have a constant positive velocity. And on a graph of velocity versus time, a constant positive velocity is going to look like a horizontal line. This represents that as time is going on, the velocity is staying the same and it's a positive value. So I can see how this graph corresponds to this graph. Let's look at another example. Suppose my position time graph were to look like this. What would the velocity versus time graph look like? Well, I can see here I have a constant negative slope. If I were describing in words what's happening here, the object starts out far away from the origin or from the zero position and is moving towards. As time goes on, that object is getting closer and closer and closer to the zero position. So it's moving towards the origin. So on a velocity versus time graph, I have a constant negative slope here, therefore a constant negative velocity. It will look something like this. So here I can see as time goes on, my velocity is a constant negative value. Now if I had numbers over here on my position graph, I could calculate what the exact slope is, and that would be the number that goes here. That exact number would go right there. I can represent some more complicated motions as well. If I have a position time graph that looks like this, I can see there are three different motions represented. I've got a positive constant velocity, I am stopped, so zero velocity, and then I have a constant negative velocity. So on my velocity versus time graph, it might look something like this. Constant positive velocity is going to be here for a certain amount of time. Then zero velocity, I'm going to drop this graph down to the t-axis. So there, there we are, right on top of the t-axis. And then this negative velocity, notice it's not as steep here, which means I'm not traveling as fast. I'm not changing my position as much every second. So as I drop this to negative, it's not going to go as far down as this one goes up. So it might look something like this. Now on a velocity time graph, there's something interesting that we can find. If I'm going to look at just this first one up here, if I were to shade in the area under the graph, and that means just shading in from whatever's graphed to the t-axis, I can see that this shape is a rectangle. And if I want to find the area of this shape, the area of a rectangle is one side times the other side. Well, how tall is my rectangle? This height here is whatever velocity I have, whatever my constant velocity is, that's what this value is here. And the horizontal, this side of my rectangle, its value is whatever the time is that I'm traveling at that velocity. So the area under my velocity time graph is equal to v times t. And that looks a little bit familiar, and it should, because as we saw before, v times t is the displacement. So we can see on a velocity versus time graph that the area under the graph is equal to the displacement of the object, or the delta x, the change of position. So the area is, is the displacement. Now, displacement can be negative. If I look at this graph, I can see if I shade in this area, what I'm going to get is my area here will still be v times t, which is still the change of position, it's still the displacement, but notice I have a negative value here for my velocity. If I had numbers, I would have a, a negative number. So I have a negative number here times a positive number it gives me a negative displacement. And what does that negative indicate? It indicates the direction. So whether it's positive or negative indicates the direction. Notice here I had a positive slope. The numbers are getting bigger and moving away from this origin, whereas here the numbers are getting smaller. I'm moving towards this origin, 
and so I have a negative displacement, and therefore a negative velocity. Another way to represent the motion of an object is what we call a motion map. Now, on a motion map, we have two things. We have dots, and we have arrows. The dots represent the position at specific time position, yep, at specific times. And the arrows represent the velocity. So for example, if I take a position time graph, and it looks like this, I can tell that I have a constant positive velocity. The velocity versus time graph is going to look like this. I have a constant positive velocity. The motion map, if I have a constant positive velocity, imagine having a little meter stick down here, right? Or a number line, if you will. So, you know, zero and to whatever. And I, I'm going to represent the position using a dot. So notice my starting position here is not quite zero. So I might have a dot that starts like right about here. So here we go. That's my position at time zero. One second later, where am I? Well, I have moved in the positive direction, and for the purpose of the motion maps, we're going to consider to the right to be positive, to the left to be negative. So I've moved to the right a certain amount, okay? And then another second later, I have moved to the right the same amount, and I've moved to the right the same amount, and I've moved to the right the same amount. So these represent the positions at time zero, one second, two seconds, three seconds, four seconds. Now, so those represent the positions, so now I'm going to represent the velocity with an arrow. That is a motion map right there. The dots representing the position, arrows representing the velocity. Now, we're only talking about one-dimensional motion, so objects are either moving to the left or they're moving to the right. So I can see here, these dots represent the position. If I just imagine that number line or that meter stick underneath, I can see the position at the various times. But what about a more complicated motion? What about something that looks like this? Suppose I go like this, and like this, and like this. So I'm moving to the left, negative velocity, quickly, stop for a period of time, and then move to the right, positive direction, slowly. Well, the velocity time graph might look something like this. Start out with a steep negative slope, therefore a fast negative velocity. Then I have zero velocity. And then I have a slow positive velocity. So it might look something like this for the velocity time graph. Well, motion map can tell the same story. Notice my starting position is a very large positive number. And so I'm going to start positive side of zero. Picture the number line. Positive side of zero means to the right. So I'm going to start out here to the right. OK, here we go. So there's my position at time zero. One second later, I'm moving to the left. OK, so I'm going to moving to the left. Got a velocity arrow there. Here's where I am a second later. And then a second later, I'm moving to the left. Now, I don't have a number scale here to know exactly how many seconds, so I'm just going to approximate that. So I'm moving to the left here, and then one second later, here I am. Okay, maybe I'll just put some dots on here to represent those times. Okay, so here I am. I have arrived at this position, this position right here. And then one second after that, notice I'm still here. I'm at the same place. So I, was, I arrived here. One second later, I'm still here. So on a motion map, the way that looks is picture that number line underneath. So whatever position I'm at when I get here, I'm still at the same position one second later. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a dot above to represent that I'm at the same position. Again, picturing that number line underneath to represent the position. I'm still here. Then one second later, I'm still here. But now I'm starting to move to the right slowly. So I'm going to draw a slow arrow to the right. And then I arrive there. I'm moving to the right slowly still. So it looks something like this. This motion map tells the same story as this velocity time graph, same story as this position time graph. Moving to the left quickly, stopping, moving to the right slowly. Moving to the left quickly, stopping, moving to the right slowly. Left quickly, stopping, right slowly. That's different ways that you can represent the motion of an object. In this, in this case, constant velocity object.